All right, here we have some clips from the Canon R6, and this was filmed in Canon Log 3. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how we can properly convert this, since this was in Log, and then uh, any kind of creative looks that we want. So we're going to work with Canon Log 3 footage and some notes that we have, and also try to balance all these shots and get them um, creating some amazing, beautiful imagery. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to analyze this footage, and we're going to use our scopes to help do that. So Canalog 3 should have the white points clipping all the way at 100, and the black levels with the darkest shot should be around 12 and a half. So we're going to check that, and this is right around the dark level, so we know that's good. Any shot that we see that has... Uh, a clipping point that is not to 100, that tells us two things. One, that is, could be a different profile, but we know this is on the Canon R6, or this was filmed underneath the native ISO. Uh, so if we're looking at the Canon R6 and we're trying to figure out what is the native ISO, we have that available on our site that can tell you uh, what those native ISO settings are. So let's take a quick look at that. Here we have the uh, base let for the Canon R6, and if we want to see any kind of specifications, uh, this is where that information will go. And underneath here, we can see that we're in Canon Log 3. The native ISO will be 800. So if you're under the 800 ISO, it will start dropping that white clipping point. You'll be losing uh, information in the highlights. And this is also for the uh, cinema gamut color space. Um, and based off that, here are our clipping points, so we know exactly where things should land. And if they are not landing there, that means we have a couple uh, issues we need to resolve first. So the first thing is it's clipping around 92. So this is probably two clicks under the native ISO because it was 100 that it drops and it just keeps dropping the lower you go in the ISO, which means there's probably not an ND filter being used. And that's something to consider if you want to maximize your highlight retention information. Also, uh, this clip, let's go ahead and add a LUT. So we're on an adjustment layer. Again, this is in Final Cut Pro, but this can be applied in Premiere or Resolve very easily. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a custom LUT. We're going to do that in the adjustment layer since all these clips are from the same camera, I believe. And then we're going to navigate to our base LUT. And then we have Canon R6. And we're going to do the Canalog 3. And immediately, that does not look good. So we're trying to figure out, okay, why does this look very saturated? What is going on? And the issue that we have is this is has uh, some Canon cameras allow you to choose what color space you want to film in. And this uh, has cinema gamut, which is this LUT that we're using, but that's not the correct one. This one was actually filmed in BT709, um, and we'll be updating the website that will have that information. It'll pretty much, pretty much be the exact same information, except the color space will be BT709. And in that case, we have a LUT that is available for that camera, the R6. So let's go ahead and navigate back to that and choose the correct LUT. So the one that does not have any information on it is going to be the Cinema Gamut by default. And then this will be referenced BT709. And immediately you can see that looks so much better. So this is how it should be. So this was filmed in BT709. Uh, I recommend maybe filming in Cinema Gamut uh, if you have the option of in your camera to choose that option. It's just a better color gamut and wider uh, color gamut to work in. Um, but we have both options and these will produce the exact same results since you're going to Rec. 709. All right, so the first, after we have that taken a look at, we uh, can look to see where our clipping point lands now. So it's just a little bit underneath, so probably 898 right there. So it's got a little bit more uh, information we could use on the highlights. But overall, this is... Uh, fairly workable so we can work with this. Um, let's just choose a shot. So whenever we add uh, Canon Log 3 or when we're filming in Canon Log 3, Canon likes us to shoot a little bit darker. Um, so uh, this was a bright shot. You can see uh, the waveform is a lot higher. Um, and in that case, once we add the LUT, we're going to need to bring uh, some exposure settings down. Now since these are all different across different uh, exposures, we don't want to do that on an adjustment layer. We want to do that on an individual clip basis. So we add the base LUT and then we go below the base LUT and we're going to add an adjustment. So we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to take my midtones and just pull them down. Obviously you don't want to crush the blacks there. So we're going to kind of 
probably feels right about there. It looks really good. Just check and scan the image and make sure there's nothing that's darker. All right, that looks good. And then we're going to use our vector scope right here, and we're going to try to get the skin tone on this line. So it looks like there's this um, patch here that's a little bit more red instead of yellow. So skin tone lies in mid-tone, so we're just going to take this, and you can see we're shifting it left and right. So we're going magenta and green until we get that line probably right there. And once we get that line there, then we can go towards warm or cool. So it's kind of like an X pattern. Once you find that tint, then you can work on the uh, the white balance. So we have the tint dialed in. And now it's a matter of is it too cold or too warm. This is a lot of sun outside, so we kind of want to lean a little bit more warm. So uh, I'm just going to shift it there. That looks really good, honestly. And then maybe the darks are a little bit on the, the red side. They're a little bit stronger. So maybe we take our shadows and just lift up just slightly towards the blue. But be careful because you can move that tint, so we don't want to do that too much. Just the black level is a little bit down. And that looks really good. We have this shot color balanced. Um, there is, um, before we have straight out of camera, we add the conversion, and then we need to adjust exposure and white balance, and then we could add a creative look on top. So let's go to another clip, this one right here. Again, this one's a little bit bright, so we're going to do those first steps again. Let's take those mid-tones. And the mid-tones, I'm not going to worry about the darks. Don't worry about crushing the darks. Just focus on skin tone. Um, and this one I'm just doing to eye. I'm not trying to look at the scopes and be like, okay, the skin needs to be right around 55 on the IRE scale or something. Skin tone can be anywhere from 40 even the way up to 70. It, it just depends on uh, the composition, the lighting and uh, what your focus is. Um, so in this case, just this feels a little bit pleasing, probably right about here. And then maybe just lift up a little bit on the shadows. Uh, and then we're going to try and white balance this shot. So we have some white in here. Again, we also have some skin tone. Those are the two things or black that we can use to really dial in um, white balance. Uh, now we have this dress that's white here and here, but these are all a little bit different in white levels. So um, we can't get it perfectly white, uh, and that's just based off of things in the sh shade or sun reflecting a section of it. So we're going to kind of get close to it. And in this case, I had the RGB parade. We could switch to the RGB overlay or the waveform. And this section right here, first of all, we have a little bit more exposure room to go for these highlights. So let's first adjust that. Let's go all the way up till we hit 100. Bring our blacks or our shadows down. Bring those mid-tones right there. And then just correct for that those shadows. All right, that feels much better. And we have that extra highlight information right there. So we're kind of maximizing our contrast, you can kind of see. And now let's work on white balance. We're going to be in the highlights because this is where this veil is. Let's take the highlights. I'm just looking at this hump right here. This is where this section of the veil lies. We're going to try to line up that red, green, and blue. Fairly right about there. feels good. And we also want to make sure skin tone is still on that line, which it does, which is great. Uh, so we have some good highlights there and then we could take some shadows if the blacks look a little too warm and we can just slightly add a little bit of coolness to it right there and then if you want to do any kind of further adjustments to just kind of tweak it we got it really close with white balance and then we're just kind of just playing with that puck right there and getting it dialed in so now we have this shot that uh, has good uh, skin exposure and skin white balance along with uh, the white um, dress there. Also be mindful whenever you have a shot that um, has dark areas, it's a good idea to skim through the shot to make sure that any adjustment you're making is not going to be crushed earlier on in that clip. So I like to make the adjustment on like a hero um, at the playhead right here uh, and then just skim through and make sure that you know nothing's clipping on the highlights and then the blacks aren't clipping, which they look right at that edge. So that looks good. Um, this shot looks good right here. We don't have to do too much there. If we want to increase the highlights, we can. But this shot also has some banding. This is in the individual clip. These are lower um, processed files. So this doesn't have, like you can see that there's some banding. This isn't because um, of the LUT or anything like that. This is just a file that was exported for this um, 
for this walkthrough. All right, and then let's try this shot right here. So we have a clip. This one, I can already tell, kind of feels more magenta leaning. So the first thing we do is always adjust exposure before our uh, white balance. So we have the skin tone where I like it, lift up on the shadows, feels nice. And then let's go ahead and take our midtones, keeping that skin tone lined up. Maybe let's cool it down just a hair. Feels good on the dress. The blacks in her hair look a little too blue, so let's kind of lean them a little bit more warm. Looks great. Let's increase our contrast by pulling down the shadows a little more and maybe a little bit more up on the highlights and then balancing out those mid-tones to taste. All right, that feels good. Much better. So that was really quick. We kind of took a shot. We had to make sure that we our skin tones are on the skin tone indicator line and then our white balance uh, looks really good on this dress. All right, so now that we have some of these shots uh, corrected, we can go ahead and add a creative look if we want to kind of get an idea of uh, what this can really look like whenever we want to uh, open it up and really have this image kind of come alive. So we're going to go ahead and add. So we're going to go ahead and add another LUT and we're going to try, let's see. Let's try like Adagio one. This is gonna be a little strong. And then just pull it down to probably 40%. And that can kind of take a look at what this, this LUT will look like. Here's the clips that we've actually worked on. Looks really nice. Perhaps we wanna try a little bit more of a warm one. So we're gonna go Emma K. Let's try the soft one, just a nice soft look. And let's crank this one up a little bit more. This feels much better. We get some really nice balance on the skin tone in this shot. Here we have a clip. Now again, once you add a creative look, you might need to go back to each individual clip and do some final adjustments. So we'll come back here. We'll go to our shadows. Just lift them up ever so slightly right there. Looks really good. And once you kind of have the look dialed in, you know this is the look you want to use for your film, you have these other shots that are kind of already balanced, then you can go ahead and start working with the other clips as well. This one looks a little more <clears throat> magenta here, uh, especially in the highlights. So we're going to kind of correct that a little bit. And we might, if we want to, pull out a little bit of the saturation in the highlights. And this is something you can do in Final Cut with this puck right here on the left side. This kind of takes off the edge there, kind of makes it look a little bit um, more pleasing. And then I could work on this shot. So now I'm on this shot. And this one, let's kind of open it up a little bit more. Looks good. It's kind of warm outside, so let's make sure that we're warm. We don't really have any skin tone too much. Uh, it's mainly the hair that's coming through. Uh, but we do have skin tone here. It's going to be a little bit harder to tell. But if you get this pretty close, it should blend into the next shot nicely like that. Okay, and then this shot, this one is being flared by the sun, it looks like. So you can see how high that's lifted up right there. And then we have some clipping that's happening in the highlights. So let's go ahead and correct this clip. We're going to keep the LUT on because we know this is what we want applied to our look. We're going to really pull down that saturation. Now it's going to look like it's falling apart because it's just a very low quality export, but the original files, it will hold up really well. And we can push those highlights all the way up there and then pull down our midtones again. Midtones I'm really focusing on skin. I'm not focusing on much else. Now, if you have a shot that goes from a faded look to where the flare goes away and look at now this section right here is really dark. You need to find the darkest section and that's going to be your target where you use uh, your shadows and make sure that you anchor them right there. Now, whenever we go earlier, okay, it's still a little bit, touching. All right, there we go. And that way when it flares, it feels more natural. It feels nice. And when you go to something really dark, you're not clamping that shot and you can still get a lot dynamic range out of that. And you can see also how the color shifts whenever there is a flare. That could also be because of the lens. It could be an ND filter, whatever it is. That can also change the color. Some ND filters will flare a certain color and it honestly makes it more difficult to color grade. Uh, because you're having to compensate for a, a, a color shift. Uh, so make sure you're using a really good ND filter on your footage. And I mean, look at this. This shot just comes alive. If you look at what this was before to now, 
amazing. And then we have the, the look on top of it. So let's turn that look off real quick. So that's the shot. We went ahead and balanced it. And we know that if we have anything above 12 and a half, we won't have any clipping. So that's great. We're gonna add our conversion, make everything come alive. And then we're going to add that just final touch finesse. And that just, this uh, EK Soft really has more warm greens, uh, some really pleasing skin tone. It just is, I feel like it's perfect for this type of wedding right here. So everything's kind of looking really nice on this shot. And I feel like we can play around if we want to and have a different look um, just to kind of see what things will look like. Perhaps we want to try, let's try marble, maybe marble two, and then we'll just dial this back down to taste. So this one, you can be 50%. Nothing needs to be at 100% necessarily. Uh, always play around with them and kind of see which ones you like. Um, perhaps we can try, let's see which one might look good. We can do a prestige one as well. Let's try the filament glam. That might look really nice. That looks really good. Let's try adventure luxury, adventurous luxury. There you're getting more yellows in those greens right here, you're getting a lot more contrast and color separation, which is really good. Uh, maybe wedding white. You want it to be really white, but you're going to have those blues that are going to be really strong. That will also be consistent with Emma K. Bright. It'll be a little bit different, but you have still that really clean, elegant look there. Um, and then if you want to get a little bit more creative or try something different, you could try uh, something like Kinetic 2. And this one has more of like a Kodak inspired filter look. And that's a really cool look too. So it's easy to just kind of play with these and kind of have different looks and see what kind of matches your vibe and the direction you're wanting to go. Um, so, but working with Canalog 3, just remember you have um, uh, a color space to choose, whether it's gonna be Cinema Gamut or BT709, ideally choose Cinema Gamut, um, but if you don't, we still have the BT709 version available for you. Also be a little bit more dark on uh, in Canon Log 3 specifically. Uh, however, if you are always having really noisy shots, then you can expose brighter and then just make sure that you're coming into the clip and bringing that down in exposure after you're applying your base LUT and you will have really good results. So thanks so much for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video.